Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Look us up on Roku in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> right now, it's August the 26, 2013. The 2013 NFL season is still days away. And there's been a love fest going on for the Atlanta Falcons, right? In my opinion, you need to sell the Atlanta Falcons. I know the Falcons hosted the NFC Championship game last year. I understand that the Falcons won 13 games last year, right? I don't believe the Falcons come close to winning 13 games this upcoming season. First, let's talk about the positive storylines. Right? There's the 13 wins. Big number. Best record in the NFC in 2012. Tony Gonzalez is coming back. He wants a ring. Right? Couple him with Julio Jones and Roddy White, and you have a pretty fearsome tandem of tight ends and receivers on this Atlanta Falcon team. Now, of course, they're adding Steven Jackson to the mix. The feeling is that Michael the Turner, excuse me, Michael the Burner Turner last year was a weak link on this offense. He only averaged 3.6 yards a carry. Surely Steven Jackson can do much better, especially since Jackson last year rushed for over a thousand yards. Right? The team's also given a big contract to Matt Ryan. They feel that they're just one step away. And, of course, the team has Pro Bowl safeties. But there are problems all over the place. This team, quite frankly, in my opinion, wasn't a dominant 13-win team last year. Understand, they had the easiest schedule last year in the NFC. Right? They played the Lions, who finished the year 4 and 12. They played the Raiders, who finished the year 4 and 12. They played the Eagles, who finished the year 4 and 12. They played the Cardinals, who finished the year 5 and 11. Folks, that's four games against teams with five wins or less. Three games against teams with no more than four wins. Then, of course, they played Tampa Bay 7-9 and nine, twice. They played Carolina 7-9 and nine, twice. They played the Saints 7-9 and nine, twice. They also had structural holes. The first time they played the Carolina Panthers, their defense gave up 199 rushing yards. Think about that. Well, the second time they played the Carolina Panthers, their defense gave up 195 rushing yards, right? Against the run, against physical teams. The Atlanta Falcons, quite frankly, have problems. Let's also talk about that secondary. Sure, their safeties are exemplary. Sure, they have Asante Samuel in the secondary. But what if I told you that Samuel is 32 years old? What if I also told you that in the other corner spot, they'll be dealing with a rookie, right? There's uncertainty at the corner position with the Atlanta Falcons. Let me also say this about rookies. Rookie corners take at least a year to acclimate themselves to the National Football League. I don't care how good the rookie corner is. He can be a guy like Patrick Peterson, who has Pro Bowl potential with the Arizona Cardinals. Take a look at Patrick Peterson's first year. Shaky. Right? Shaky. I don't expect Tufan or Alford to come in here and dominate their first year in the National Football League. I think the corners are a problem for the Atlanta Falcons, and that should be a big problem in a division with Drew Brees and Cam Newton, right? Understand, the veterans 
at corner have left the team apart from Asante Samuel. Right? Also, Steven Jackson. Let's talk about him. You know what? This is gambling. This isn't the mainstream media. I have no doubt Steven Jackson is a role model and is a great guy. Right? But let's cut through the fact. Steven Jackson, in my opinion, as a running back, is not as good as he think. Right? Understand that Steven Jackson averaged, in fact, has averaged for his career, 4.2 yards a carry. Right? 4.2. Last year, he averaged 4.1 yards a carry. Right? Those are exemplary career rushing numbers. Let's talk about Steven Jackson as a receiving running back. For his career, which dates back to 2004, Steven Jackson has a grand total of eight receiving touchdowns. Right? Eight. Let's go one step further. Let's talk about Steven Jackson as the touchdown machine. That Falcon fans think he's going to be. Right? Just understand that Steven Jackson has not had as many as eight touchdowns rushing in a season since 2006 when he had 13. Last year, Steven Jackson had four rushing touchdowns. The year before that, he had five. The year before that, he had six, right? So the narrative with the Falcons is that they've significantly upgraded at the running back position. I would question that. Let's also uh, continue on here. You know, Atlanta's defense started last year like gangbusters, right? Of course, we now know that their strength of schedule was not the best. But it's unsettling to know that the defense started to fall apart in the second half of the season. Right? That's a bad sign. That tells you that whatever gimmicks they were running out there early in the season, the league caught up with them toward the end of last year. Right? In the National Football League, they put it on film. That film is all over the league. I don't believe this defense will be able to catch the league by surprise the way they did last year. Also think about it. The Falcons have had some significant changes on their offensive line. Isn't that a cause for concern? Since Matt Ryan was hit more than 60 times last year, the only quarterback in the league who got hit more was Andrew Luck, a rookie, right? You add it all up, and all I'm saying is that the people in Atlanta who think that they're going to the Super Bowl this year might just be kidding themselves. Folks, this isn't a 13-win team on the verge of reaching even greater heights. Rather, this is a team that seems to me, at least, to have benefited from a very weak schedule last year against opponents who quite frankly found creative ways to lose to the Falcons right keep in mind the Carolina Panthers literally were a minute away from winning their game the first time the second time they beat the Falcons it's unclear whether the Falcons have any answers against the Carolina Panthers also the Saints they're getting a pretty important person back their Super Bowl winning head coach, Sean Payton, right? You don't think Drew Brees isn't going to be salivating when he sees a rookie corner in the secondary of the Atlanta Falcons, right? Also, good luck with the Falcons getting a schedule this year that has three different 4-12 and 12 opponents. I don't see that happening. You add it all up, and I think the Falcons return to the pack this year. I don't see the Falcons hosting the NFC Championship game. I think they're going to have a very difficult time 
of it. This is not a 13-win team, folks. This, quite frankly, might not be a double-digit win team. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let's just cut through the fat and get at the truth. And the truth of it, in my opinion, is that the Atlanta Falcons are overrated. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.